Hey guys, welcome again to the Mask Club. If you are just joining us, so welcome. For some time, we have been looking at number bees. We looked at modular arithmetic, and now we're starting a brand new concept: fractions, decimals, and approximations. But for today's class, we'll be focusing more on fractions. Let's get started. What are fractions, right? If you ask everybody, people have different opinions on what fraction is all about, and I think most of the opinions actually converge to the same meaning, right? So it says fractions are really of the form a divided by b. So whenever I see something like a slash b, you what you're actually seeing is a fraction, right? Where a is the numerator and b is the denominator. So the a is known as the numerator and b is known as the denominator. But there's a condition that b must not be equal to zero. So if you take a calculator, you can take a calculator, try maybe three divided by zero, right? What is it going to give you? most likely math error right because that is an undefined is undefined right you don't divide by zero in mathematics so as long as the b is not equal to zero you are fine right under fractions there are different types of fractions right so the first type of fraction that we know of is the proper fraction what do you mean by proper right three over four an example is like three over four where the numerator is less than the denominator right so it's like you are weighing maybe 10 kg right and you carry a weight of 2 kg, right? So that is um, out of your 10 kg weights, right? You're carrying a weight, a weight of 2 kg. You know, when you go to the gym and you want to gym and all of that. So 2 over 10, that's actually a very nice pro proper proportion, right? But when you now go to the gym and you're wearing like 10 kg and you carry something like 15 kg, right? That's 15 kg being carried by somebody of 10 kg. That is an improper fraction, which takes us to the next type of fraction right so when you see something like 11 divided by 3 right that's an improper fraction right so you're carrying more than you can you can undo and then we have another type of fraction called mixed fraction so what's the mixed fraction so you're seeing a whole number here right this is 3 2 over 5 right so you're seeing like a own a, a normal number right a whole number and then a fraction so you can see it's mixed right there is a whole number part 3 and there's a fraction part 2 over 5 right so that's basically when we talk about fractions, right? So we have the proper, we have improper, and we have mixed fraction, right? So if I wanted to rewrite this improper fraction, right, 11 over 3, I wanted it to stop carrying all the weights, and I wanted it to be like a mixed fraction, right? So what would I do? So if I come here, so we had 11 divided by 3, right? If I divide 11 by 3, how many times would that go? So 3 times 1 is 3 times 2, 6 times 3, 9, right? That is the only thing, right? So that would be 3, right? But from the 9 that I have, right, I was trying to divide 11, but I was only able to divide 3 parts of 3, right? Which gave me 9. So what would be the remainder? The remainder would be 2. So that would be 2 whole number over 3, right? So this is the same. So therefore, 11 divided by 3 is the same thing as saying 3 whole number two over three right so when you have an improper fraction like this you can also change it to a mixed fraction that was what i was trying to drive at and if i have a mixed fraction like this i can also change it back to an improper fraction how can i do that let's say i have five o number two over let's say two over five right two over five how can i change this to an improper fraction what will i do i'll just say at the top here right I'll just say 5 times 5, right? And then I will add this value at the top, which is 2 plus 2, right? So 5 times 5 plus 2, then divided by the denominator, which is 5, right? So 5 times 5 is 25 plus 2, that is 27 over 5, right? Let's compare, if we convert this one back to, a, to an improper fraction, right? That will be... 3 times 3, Abby. Then plus 2. Right? Divided by 3. So, if you look at the 3 times 3 is what? 3 times 3 is 9, right? So, 9 plus 2 is actually 11, right? So, if I add all of this back, right? That means I'm going to have what? 11 divided by 3, right? So, we are back to where we started from. Right, so that's it. So you can change from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction, from a mixed fraction to an improper fraction. Great. So let's look at some examples, right? It's just a very small example of fraction. So you go to Domino Pizza, right? Or 
any pizza brand that you know, right? You and your siblings, you want to share the pizza, right? So you can look at it. Yeah, I mean, you've taken one part. You can see this pizza is very into how many parts? Four parts, right? So you've taken one part out of it. How many parts are remaining? Three parts. Great. So look at this one. How many parts are here? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Seven parts, right? Another seven parts. Somebody has eaten three parts out of it. So your siblings have how many parts to share? They only have just four parts out of seven, right? Great. Look at this one now. So the same thing too. You have how many? It's varying to six, right? But somebody has eaten three out of it. So this will be what? Three over six that is remaining right so the one that are remaining is remaining three look at this is one two three four one two three four so this is eight abby but somebody has it's in three right that means you have how many remaining you have five out of eight remaining great same thing too for yet so, so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so out of ten so what does it in five right so what is remaining for the remaining siblings to share is actually five out of ten and this is a full circle, right, divided into two. Your parents have eaten one. So how many is remaining for the children to share? Only one piece out of two pieces, right? So that makes sense. So this is really the idea behind fractions. Now that we are done with the idea behind fractions, let's go to something else, which is very, very important. How do we compare fractions, right? So look at this question. But before we enter this question, if I wanted to compare a fraction, um, let's say three, over five right and four over five right and i say which one of them is greater right we can see already that out of five pizzas right your all of you are sharing three right compared to out of five pizzas all of you are sharing four if you share it among yourselves which one will bring a larger amount of course it's going to be this guy right when you're sharing four out of six compared to when you're sharing three out of five right so if they are the same basis you can just pick the higher numerator when i mean numerator i mean the one that is on top so another example is that if i had 16 over 18 right and this other person has 17 over 18 which of them is greater obviously we can say that because the numerator of this one is greater than the numerator of this, and because they share the same base right they are sharing the same base we can agree that this one is greater than the other one right so that's basically it about when they are the same base but when they are not of the same base like this guy so we have two over five and five over thirteen how are we going to compare so there are two ways that we're going to compare and i'll teach you both ways so we have two over five and we have five over thirteen right so these are two ways method one right so you cross multiply cross multiply Right, so this two we multiply this guy and this guy will multiply this guy. So we don't know we don't know what is what is happening here. So if I, if you cross multiply, that would be two times thirteen, right? And then my question mark because I don't know the relationship yet. Question mark five times five, right? So two times thirteen, of course that is twenty six, right? And two times five, that is twenty five. Of course, we know that twenty six is greater than twenty five, right? Because 26 is greater than 25, the fraction at the side of 26, which is 2 over 5, will be greater than the other one, right? So, therefore, I can just assume that from this deduction, 2 over 5 is greater than 5 over 13, right? This is, this is one trick that you can use to compare. And you can put it in your calculator, you will see that this value actually holds. So, whenever you are given two fractions to compare, right just cross multiply so this two starts from this place so two times 13 puts it at, the, at this side five times five put it at the other side right the one that gives you the higher value right is the one that is greater right so from this small analysis that we have done right we know that two over five is greater than five over 13. remember we start from up to down then this guy right the, don't go and put five times five at this side here if you put five times five at this side you're going to have something very wrong Right, in that case, 5 over 10 is bigger than 2 over 5, which is not it. So you must note the direction, right? So that's basically it. The second method that I talked about, I was talking about is, so the two numbers that I want to compare, we have 2 over 5, 
and we have 5 over 13, right? So what we can do is that we can multiply, so this one, the, the denominator here is 5, the denominator here is, is 13, right? So I can multiply, I'll multiply the top and bottom of this one by the denominator of this guy, and I'll multiply the top and bottom of this guy with the denominator of the other guy. So what am I saying? So this is 2 times, what is the denominator of this guy? 2 times 13, right? 5 times what? 13, right? So this guy, I multiply with the denominator of this guy, which is 5 times 5, 13 times 5. So 2 times 13 is 26. Divided by 13 times 5. Let's see that. So 13 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So 5 carry over 1, right? 1 times 5 is 5 plus 1. That is 6. So this is 65. Right? 5 times 5 is also 25. Divided by 65, right? 13 times 5 is 15 times 5 times 13. So we can see that from basic comparison, this out of 26, out of 65 portions, we are sharing 26. And out of 65 portions, we are sharing 25. Of course, this one is going to be greater than this other guy, right? So therefore, we can say that what 2 over 5 is greater than 5 over 13. So whichever way you choose, right, you still arrive at the same answer. And you can see the essence of what we're trying to do is that we're trying to make both of them to be of the same base. Right, to, to, sorry, to be of the same denominator, right? So this is 65, 65. Because at the same denominator, we can easily compare and just pick the one with the higher value at the numerator. So two different methods to achieve the same thing. So let's look at one final example. So this is, we want to compare 2 over 3, 1 over 5, and 1 over 2. So we want to compare 2 over 3, 1 over 5, and 1 over 2 right so I mean the cross multiplying method might not be the best method for this kind of thing right we just what we need to do is we want to make this the three of them to be of the same base or the same denominator like the previous question that we just did right so what is what can I be able to multiply the top and bottom of this guy top and bottom of this guy top and bottom of this guy that all of them will be at the same base right so you know before we just said multiply by the denominator of this guy so that would be 2 times 5, 3 times 5, and then 1 times 3, 5 times 3, right? But because we have more than two numbers now, we need to find the number that is common, right? That is where we talk about the lowest common multiple, right? So how can we do that? Just multiply each of the bases. So that would be 3 times 5 times 2, right? 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30, right? So I want all of the bases, right, to be 30. Right, so if I wanted this base to be 30, what will I do? I'll multiply both the top and the bottom by 10. Right, you can see this multiplied by 10. So if I even cancel out, I'll still have my 2 over 3 at the end of the day. Right, so we are not bothered with that. So this guy now will be 2, will be 20 over 30. Right, so what of this guy 1 over 5? What can I multiply by top and bottom to make the bottom to be 30? Right, so I'll multiply the top by six and the bottom by six right so one times six is six five times six is thirty right so let me also multiply this guy what can i multiply the top and bottom by that will make the bottom to be thirty so that is what so if it's 15 you actually got it right so one times 15 two times 15 right so one times 15 is 15 two times 15 is 30 Right. So now because all of them are in the same base, right, we can now correctly know which one is greater and which one is less than. Of course, we know that the one that has 6 over 30, which is 1 over 5, is the least. So 1 over 5, right, is less than. So which one? After the 1 over this list, this is second list, right? And second is coming from this guy, which is 1 over 2. So it's less than 1 over 2, Abby. And 1 over 2 is also less than what? this guy right which is two over three two over three right so therefore we know the is really is two over three followed by one over two then one over five right so this is our ways that we compare fractions right whether the, whether it's two different fractions or three or more different fractions just find something that is common right and express all of them in that common base and with that we are actually true with the first video so the next video we'll be talking about basic operations like how do we had 
how do we subtract using fractions so if you found this video very useful please like the video subscribe to our channel so that you can be up to date with all of the amazing contents that we put out and don't forget to drop a comment if something is unclear or you want to comment the good work that we are doing see you guys in the next video